So today on this beginner series for Final Cut Pro X version 10.3, I'm going to look at exporting your files. So coming over to here, we just got a very, very short, let's say 30, 32, or 30, 34 seconds uh, of video that we're going to export and make a file of. Now I mentioned earlier um, in a previous video that uh, your project files, as they exist, they are not fully formed videos. They are basically a set of instructions to Final Cut as to how you know, you'd like these videos to be assembled. And they only come into being and only actually become your video once you have exported it fully. So we're gonna just take this particular project that we're gonna work on, and we're gonna just do an export of this. So by default, I tend to do Command A, just make sure it's all selected. And then we wanna go up to this, um, this symbol in the top corner, which opens up our share options. Now there are a number of different features here. DVD becoming more and more difficult to do these days. I, my, computer doesn't even have a DVD disk drive. Um, master file, this is the one I would like most people to do because all of these additional options um, are available to you once you have a master file. If you have any of these kind of these other destinations, um, they can all be applied once you have your file. So I would always just by default do this one. You can direct upload direct to Facebook, direct to YouTube, Vimeo, um, and to, to optimize them for particular Apple devices, but I have a tendency to find that unless you have a particularly good internet link, they can be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to show you how to share uh, as a master file. So that you have this one here. So once you select your share option for master file, this is the window that opens up to you. You've got all these descriptors. This image here isn't just an image, it's actually a quick scan just to make sure you've got your whole videos there. Um, this information down here is particularly important just to reference. This is just always, always worth clarifying in case any, you know, there are any default settings on prior that um, you haven't made adjustments to, particularly with my students who often work in shared labs. The first option here just shows you the aspect ratio of your video, double checking. This is exactly what I want. It's a 1080 video with 25p that your stereo is left and right, 48 kilohertz. Here, the, the little clock is just a reference to how long your video is. Always worth checking that just in case you've accidentally got some extra, you know, default black at the end that you didn't need, like some kind of like gap media or um, that it's only selected a small portion of your video. And then double checking, this is what we're gonna have a look at. This one here currently says, currently says MPEG-4 movie. That's an MP4 film, which is what we're gonna look at making. But there are another couple of options here, which I will show you also. And this is the final size that your video is going to be. And do have a look at this because it will it can change quite dramatically depending on which settings you pick. So we're going to go up to settings just to show you a few options that are available to you. format. Now the format here that says computer, that is in reference to an MP4 file. Um, video codec that is by default for um, MP4 files uh, through Final Cut is H.264. And there are only two options available to you as your video codecs. One is a faster encode and one is better quality. Now either of those, you know, they're fairly optimal. I haven't noticed a massive difference between either. If I'm shooting on, you know, kind of quite high quality footage and stuff, faster encode can sometimes be more useful for things like you know, uploading online and things, but it's very minimal in my experience, the, the difference between the two. Resolution, you have the option within your the, the computer aspect to, to have a lower resolution version of your footage if you want. Um, if you need to, for example, for file transfer, to show someone a quick draft um, or to upload it into a, to a medium that um, where file size is limited, you could downgrade the footage. Also, if you want to, if you're doing things like mastering your audio and things like Logic, if you do one of the lower versions, you can get that slight video reference without the need for, for the high quality uh, video file. Um, you've then got here your format. Now up here we've got mastering video and audio. Video and audio, clicking on that, that's gonna give you a .mov file, but I want you just to observe this option here. So that here, the QuickTime Movie, it's not changed it too much because we've still got our video codec as H.264. It used to be previously that this would uh, automatically go into Apple ProRes and uh, massively increase the, the size of your video. Now you can see here within your video codecs you now have a lot more options. You do not need to go into most of these. Um, they all have very very different features but your Apple ProRes against like a very high quality kind of optimized footage that you can kind of use for if you're going to edit this footage elsewhere someone else uh, somewhere else um, all of these options are if it's for, for broadcast, you know, there's so many, op you know, very high professional options. 
these guns class 50 100 these these are really high quality uh, versions available to you if you know a bit about formats you can absolutely use these but for us for what we're working in just kind of for standard videos which are going to go up on social media um which you're kind of going to share then these are going to they're not going to be handleable people aren't yeah, going to know what to do with them so we get but if for example i took one of these you can see the size. This is only a 34 second video. It's already increased about six times the the size of them. So just that's considerably more. So just be very mindful as to what um, codec you're choosing. Um, it does compress the footage um, just to make it manageable, but it keeps the quality pretty high. So it's a very optimal codec. Once you've done all that, just check that everything is exactly what you want it to be. So if you want a .mov file, which is compatible primarily with Apple products, but is getting more and more um, universally kind of shareable. I find some people who are still working on older Windows Windows systems still find .mov a little tricky, but anything like YouTube, Facebook, all that, they're all going to handle it no problem at all. Um, you can work with your .movs. Alternatively, you go, if you go to computer and do it as an MP4 file, MP4 files are, are just a little bit more compatible with other um, with other file systems um, and programs and they can be sometimes a tiny bit more reliable. So once you've chosen your format that you're going to work with, you're going to click on to next. You need to set a destination for your file. So you might want it straight into your into your hard drive. I'm going to throw it on my desktop just for the moment so it's nice and clear. So Solomon test. And I'm just going to click save and I'm going to let it do its thing. Now this process, again, this is a very short video. So it shouldn't take very long. You need to make sure that this process is finished before you close Final Cut or it won't have written. So this is just this is Final Cut essentially taking all of the instructions that you've given it to what effects you want to be applied, um, what text you've applied, what color correction you've applied, and it's writing all of that and it's creating a new file that is totally separate, um, that's manageable, that you can upload to YouTube, that you can share with people, you can use in presentations, um, and it's going to create that for you. So I'm just going to flip, as that's happening, I'm going to go onto my desktop. So you can see, until this is fully formed, you can't read anything. It might look like it's there, but it's just not quite there yet. It's still, still writing that file. You'll know when it has fully completed, when this will, this symbol changes to, to a picture that it's selected from your, there you go, from your image. So we've now got our file, our MP4 file. So I'm going to double click on this. It, on Apple computers by default opens up into QuickTime. I can make it as big or as small as I want. I'm just going to play it and see. We have our file. It's been formed. Some interesting artistic effects. <laughs> our previous version. So that's our, fire, our final file of our lovely little video. Just double check this one here. Yeah, it's not just yeah. So once you've you know kind of chosen all those images, you can decide then what you you know if you, if you like essentially what it's done. If you don't like it, and uh, I'm gonna take this video and change my put that back to normal. Um, once you export your video, that's when you see your video in its fullest quality. Anything that you're watching in this viewer. Up until the point where it's written, it is rendered for view, so you 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 might not notice tiny tiny little details um, that suddenly become hugely clear once your video is exported. So I would always recommend once you once you've exported your video, watch fully from start to finish every moment of the export because um, that's when you find tiny little bits that you you maybe have missed during during the during the edit here because you haven't been able to watch them in that full full crisp clarity especially things like text and sort of details and, and where, where the cuts happen um so just as part of your like your proofreading like you would an essay just make sure that you watch your video start to finish um even after your export to make sure that the file is exactly and occasionally get the odd glitch can happen you know through final cut i get that quite a lot with text or things like your paste layers and stuff it's it can be a, a little tricky so um, and I've decided already after that that I didn't like the way this looked, so I would do another export. I think keeping that above this time rather than the, rather than underneath with the with the compositing mode. So yes, that's our that's our sharing process. Um, 
very quickly just because it's part of a project that we're working on I'm going to show you just how to export just the audio files if you needed to if you were um, if you had to go through that process of, of exporting your audio mastering it and bringing it back in so I'm going to do command A again back up to here back up to master file down to our settings and instead of format computer you could choose the option of audio only if I click on this audio only option this is where you have your audio file formats so you've got a number of different ones here again working with things like your .was and your AIFF so a little better for um, retaining the quality mp3 so you can press a little further kind of like your codecs um, double checking again the length waveform audio making sure that's all it needs to be you just click next and then you would have your audio file audio onto my desktop also this is usually a much faster process because it's not direct there we go <laughs> done in a matter of moments and now we've got a Solomon audio app which I, if I double click is going to open up into my iTunes and then we have our audio now that's already an existing audio track so not to worry too much about that but that's how you regenerate those two particular portions and if you needed to then you could bring that audio straight back in like let's say you were mastering it and working away bring my audio in, import selected and then realign it with the video could delete that one there and just work with what you had created with whatever edits you had created as a high quality audio file so that's all you need to know with regards to exporting so hope that all goes well for you and let me know if you have any issues thanks very much